Monday, which means it's time for our weekend box office report <laughs> brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Claiming the number one spot on its opening weekend is the new James Bond film Spectre. The super spy film brought in $73 million, which to put into perspective is more than double than all of last week's top five movies put together. <laughs> Coming in second is the new Charlie Brown film Peanuts, taking in $45 million, also more than all of last week's top five films put together. Dropping down to the third spot is the Matt Damon film The Martian, adding $9.3 million to bring its worldwide total up to $458 million. In the number four position is Goosebumps, making an additional $6.9 million. And rounding out the top five is the Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg film Bridge of Spies, making $6 million. John, what stands out to you about this week's box office report? Um, a couple things sounded to me, starting with Spectre. I believe on this show, I think I pegged Spectre for one fifteen. Now, everywhere I'm reading... They're saying that Spectre met expectations. That's where the studio's happy with the number. That's great. But I honestly thought it was going to crack 100. I really did. So I was way off on that one. Again, broken record player, Matt Damon, The Martian, <laughs> right. still in the top five, only dropped 20% this week to almost crack double digits in the millions again. So that's really great to see. And it's it's wonderful to see Peanuts doing so well. I I really thought Peanuts would come in under that. I thought it's great. There's a nostalgia factor, but not a lot of new generation of people are looking forward to it. I pegged it about 30, 45, which to me is a great result. So a much better much more recovered box office from last week, which was just abysmal. So a nice showing for a lot of films, Mark. Yeah, well, the Amish guy called it because I didn't think that <laughs> Spectre was going to do what Skyfall did, and it ended up not doing it. Now, I think part of the reason, and again, it sounds strange to say, is that Peanuts took some of that money away. Peanuts is a multi-generational appeal, and I didn't think it would do $45 million, but I was hopeful it would. I'm so happy to see that movie do well because I loved it. Spectre was critically received pretty well, but not like Skyfall was. People weren't raving about Spectre like they were the previous uh, Skyfall and Casino Royale. They were also Daniel Craig films, so I think maybe that's why it didn't quite hit a number that you would love. The studio is probably happy with it, but I can't say that they're thrilled. The Martian. The, I'm so happy. This thing is going to still be in the top five when we actually get a man to <laughs> land on Mars. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's nice to see Goosebumps hanging around as well, but yeah, Peanuts was the big win, I think, for this weekend. You know what? It's almost like the Bond franchise is becoming the next Star Trek franchise. Remember back when Star Trek, Wrath of Khan, Search for Spot, all that kind of, it's like, the first one, uh, well, no, 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 it was the, a little bit of the opposite, but it was like, one comes out and is good, the next one comes out and people didn't like it. The next one comes out and it's great, the next one comes out and people, that's what we've got with Bond Sword. Casino yeah. Royale, everybody loved. Quantum Solace, eh. right. then Skyfall, yay! And then Spectre is like, meh. You know, yeah. sort of thing happening. Anyway, that means the next one is bound to be awesome. Anyway, Schnapp, what yeah. do you think about the box And office? unfortunately, I hope the next one doesn't have Daniel Craig in it because he seemed really bored in this Spectre. I, I thought of Spectre was just okay. I just saw it, and I was, like, looking forward to it, like, equaling Skyfall, and in no way did it equal it. It wasn't as bad as Quantum, but it just felt like, you know, he was walking through the scenes, and it also was very kind of, like, tired. There was, like, Dennis and I both agreed, like, the train fight sequence was incredible. There's a lot of action scenes that are amazing but overall it just didn't have that same impact that skyfall did so ultimately i think that's what's going to happen with its box office it's going to do really well here in, in, in america but it's not going to do amazing and i just i remember people telling me how great skyfall was and being sold on skyfall by the marketing inspector i was aware that the movie was coming out but a lot of the billboards i saw around los angeles it was daniel craig in that day of the dead mask right. and then it says specter with 007 written in smart letters behind it and it's like dude a lot of people know that's even james bond behind that mask right. you gotta see the movie to know he's the dude behind that mask at the beginning of the mm, film so yeah. i didn't love the marketing campaign for specter peanuts is also i thought that was a little undermarketed as well but i'm yeah. happy that people were aware it was coming out because that movie deserves to be seen yeah, and peanuts i saw this weekend too and, and definitely it's a it's a family film like it was like right i thought that like myself as an adult i felt there was too many snoopy red baron sequences for me oh i love I just, you can <laughs> never have too many snoopy for, red barons for my it's dumb ass you can and, I think <laughs> and it, was it number, did it, for number three i was like i hope that's the last one and there were two more so i was like all right come on snoopy kill him already but uh <laughs> no it was very enjoyable and uh, definitely i went there at a matinee with kids screaming the entire movie so that's just that joy of having a lot of children in a theater is you get to enjoy it with them, like watching it with them talking the entire time. And at the very end, right when the credits hit, a kid yelled, Charlie Brown! And that was my favorite part of the movie. Because <laughs> kids love this film. So it's definitely, if you have kids, bring them to see Char this it's, Peanuts It's not movie. just kids, man. I mean, I, I know talking to Dennis and talking to a lot of people when they see, like when people, everybody saw it before me, and so they're all coming on going, 
this movie's great. And so it's really happy to see the success for it. With Spectre, can't help but feel there's a there was a missed opportunity there because you know, you come out of uh Skyfall and everybody really liked Javier Bardem's yes. a villain, mm-hmm. right? Now we're going into Spectre and you get two time Academy Award winner Christoph Waltz as the bad guy in a Bond film? Right. Are you effing kidding me? Right. This is going to be amazing kind of kind And of your boy Dave Bautista, too. And Dave right. Bautista. One of my big problems, and I know we're not reviewing it right now, right. but the, the villains were a little underutilized, and it just... You know, again, that movie was it was fine yeah. with me. I enjoyed watching it, but it wasn't Quantum of Solace where I walked out scratching my head like, "What the hell just happened?" Right. But it just wasn't as good as Sky. Right, Quantum of Solace. It was it about a water or something? <laughs> right, we're in the desert. I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah, you instantly forget it. And I will say that any screen time that Monica Bellucci is on screen is time well spent. Right, it was, so that was short. That. Dave Batista was in it too little, and Christoph Waltz was just badly written. <laughs> this is some bad scenarios. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.